Hello, welcome to Linear Functions and Models, The Skills. My name is Tuesday J. Johnson. I'm a lecturer at the University of Texas, El Paso, and an assistant professor at Doniana Community College. Let's start with a definition. So a linear function is one that can be written in the form f of x equals mx plus b, or y equals mx plus b, where m and b are fixed numbers. Now in here, so m and b are very important. Let me get the right uh, tool here, y equals mx plus b. The rule of m in our equation, uh, if y equals mx plus b, then y changes by m units for every one unit change in x. So if x goes up by one, y will go up by m. And b is gonna be our starting value. We haven't talked about the rule of b yet. Right? If x goes up by one, the y values increase or decrease, change by the value of m. And this is gonna be addition or subtraction change. And we can take a look at uh, what that really means, and it gives us a slope formula. The slope is, m is, the change in y over the change in x. Now, we can't have equal x values. If we have equal x values, we'll have a zero in the denominator. Zero in the denominator is bad. So as long as the x values aren't the same, we can use this to, uh, to discuss m, the slope. The b value in our equation, when x is zero, Right, zero times any number m is zero. Uh, zero plus b gives me b. So when x is zero, y is just b. It leads to the graphical role, which is the y-intercept, is going to be zero comma b. So uh, we call this very often the slope-intercept form, and it's because it tells us the slope and the y-intercept of the graph. Mathematicians keep it simple, right? Slope-intercept form because we can see the slope and y-intercept. If I want to find my intercepts in general, to find the x-intercept, set y equal to 0 and solve. To find the y-intercept, set the x to 0 and solve. Always, whichever intercept you're looking for, set the opposite one equal to 0 and solve. Alright, so, yeah, I had a minute. I had a, a, a brain thing just, just not work on me there. Let's cross out this extra word that we don't need. Decide if the given function is linear. Use your knowledge of slope and y-intercept to write the equation. Now notice here, uh, the x values increasing by one each time. Fantastic. Uh, the first thing I notice is that an x value of zero gives me a y value of seven. So I can see the point zero seven is on the graph. And if the point zero seven is on the graph, then I know my b value is seven if this function is linear. Take the easy part out of the way. Now, let's look at the pattern. The x values increase by one each time. Fantastic. Uh, since the, all the values of x increase by one, we're gonna look at the values of y. Is there a consistent amount that is added or subtracted? To get from one to four, we add three. Add three to get seven, add three to get 10, add three, add three, add three. It looks like we add 3 to get each new y value, so add 3 tells me my slope is a positive 3. I'm going to have the x, I'm going to have the plus 7, the y-intercept we determined, because there is a consistent amount that we add each time to the y values for a consistent change in x, we know this is a linear function, and I called it capital F because that's what the table said to call it. I'm going to ignore that word. Same setup, right? G of x. I see that 0, negative 2 is a point on the graph. 0, negative 2. If this function is linear, I know my b value will be negative 2. x values increase by 1 each time. So what do I do with my y values? To get from 8 to 3, I subtract 5. Minus 5 to get negative 2. Minus 5, minus 5. So I subtract 5. That's my pattern. I subtract 5. Subtract negative 5. So minus 5 is my m value, I'll have my x, and my b value is a negative 2. So g of x is a linear function, g of x is negative 5x minus 2. Alright, there's no y-intercept, that's a bummer. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Let's see if we could find our m value if this is in, fun in fact linear. So when I look at the pattern of the actual values that I have, negative 1 to 1 to 3, my x values are increasing by 2. At those same values, my y values are increasing by 4. We can write this as a slope. My slope is the change in y, 
y increases by 4, so I'm going to put plus 4. My x values increase by 2, let's call that a plus 2, it's always y over x, change in y over change in x. 4 divided by 2 is 2, so I found a slope. I know that this is a linear function because there is consistency in addition and subtraction to find the next values. Since it does appear to be linear, we can fill in some blanks, right, to get from, oh, let's, let's put it in blue. If I add 2 to get the next one, that'll be an 8. Add 2, that's 12. Add 2, that's 16. If I go the opposite direction, I'll go down 2. And I can fill in some blanks, and I know my values in particular. When x is 0, I know my y value is going to be 8. And I have my equation, h of x equals 2x plus 8. Now, uh, is this one linear? And I'm going to tell you no. Notice how uh, from negative 2 to 0, I add 2. So my pattern in x is to add 2. However, to get from 9 to 4, I subtract 5. To get from 4 to 0, I subtract 4, and then 0 to negative 3 is negative 3. Yes, it's a pattern, but it's not a pattern of consistency. Do I add or subtract the same amount every time? No. And because this changes, we know that it is not linear. So a, ch a consistent change in x will always give a consistent change in y in order for it to be linear. If you don't have that consistency, it's not a linear function, and there's nothing you can do about it. All right, so now suppose we're given some equations. We want to find the slope. Remember, y equals mx plus b. m is the slope. m is the coefficient of x, as long as y is by itself. So, uh y equals 2x over 3. What number is in front of the x? It's not just the 2, right? because 2 is divided by 3. So the slope in number 1 is 2 thirds. If we're given 8x minus 2y equals 1, to find the slope, we have to solve for y first. So I'm going to subtract 8x from both sides, and I'll have negative 2y equals sign, negative 8x, right? I subtracted 8x from both sides, plus 1. And then I'm going to divide by 2. And when I divide by 2, minus 2y equals minus 8x plus 1. When I say divide by negative 2, I'm going to divide every single term by a negative 2. Anything that's separated by a plus, a minus, or an equal sign, I'm going to divide by the negative 2. And here we get a negative 2y divided by y is y, equal sign. Negative 8x divided by a negative 2. Well, negative 8 over negative 2 is positive 4, and I still have my x. 1 divided by negative 2 is a negative 1 half. Now that I have y by itself, the slope is the coefficient of x, the number in front of x. It's m equals 4. For problem number 3, uh, 2y plus 3 equals 0. I want to solve for y. Find the number in front of x. That's my m. To solve for y, I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, and then after I subtract 3 from both sides, I'm going to divide everything by 2. 2y divided by 2 is y. Negative 3 divided by 2 is a negative 3 halves. But this doesn't give me an x, so what's the number in front of x? If you want, you could rewrite it as y equals 0x minus 3 halves, because 0 times x is 0, and mathematicians are far too busy i.e. lazy, to write down a 0x. But the 0 makes it stand out more that our slope is 0. This is the equation of a horizontal line. Finding the slope of 3x plus 5 equals 0. But I just said in the last three problems that we can find the slope m as the coefficient of x when we solve for y. How do we solve for y? We can't solve for y in this one because there is no y. If we can't solve for y, we won't have a slope. The slope is undefined. But we could solve this one for x. I could subtract 5 from both sides and then divide each term by 3 to get x equals negative 5 thirds. This happens to be the equation of a vertical line. 
Every vertical line has undefined slope because there's no changes in our x value. The x is a consistent negative 5 thirds in this example. And if the x doesn't change, we get a zero in our denominator for the slope formula, and we can't do the arithmetic. All right, so calculate the slope through the given pair of points if defined. We have 0, 0, and negative 1, 2. Remember the slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, change in y over change in x. Uh, notice how x1, y1, the first x value, the first y value lined up over top of each other. The second x value, the second y value lined up over top of each other. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Let's substitute our second y value, that's 2, minus our first y value is 0. In the denominator, x2, the second x value is negative 1, minus the first x value is 0. Notice, negative 1, 2 is a point, 0, 0 is a point. They're lined up over top of each other. All right, So I could see my points lined up over top of each other, and I'm fairly confident that I did this correctly. 2 minus 0 is 2, negative 1 minus 0 is negative 1. 2 divided by negative 1, I found my slope to be a negative 2. Two points, 4, 3, and 4, 1. I'm going to subtract the y values, 1 minus 3. In the same order, I'm going to subtract my x values, 4 minus 4, uh-oh. Well, I know 1 minus 3 is negative 2, but 4 minus 4 is 0. Anytime you're dividing by 0, no, you can't do that. A 0 in the denominator tells me I'm going to have an undefined slope. And if I go back, I see, oh yeah, my x values didn't change. If my x values didn't change, I get a zero denominator. That's an undefined slope. We're looking at a vertical line. If we're given the points negative 2, 4, and 3, 7, I'm going to take 7 minus 4, and 3 minus a negative 2. 7 minus 4 is 3. 3 minus a negative 2, if I subtract a negative, I'm adding, so 3 plus 2 is 5. That's my slope, 3 fifths. I don't care that it's 0. 0.6. In order to find that it's 0. 0.6, most of you would have to reach and grab your calculator, type it in. That's extra work. Don't do extra work. Find the fraction, leave it, walk away. As long as your fraction is simplified, i.e. reduced, all common terms canceled, it's good. You don't need a decimal. Number 4. 4, 3, and 1, 3. In order to find the slope, I'm going to subtract the second y value 3 minus the first y value, also 3. Same order, 1 minus 4 in my denominator, subtracting the x values. 3 minus 3 is 0. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. And it's okay to have a 0 in the numerator. Totally okay. It just gives you a 0. 0 in the denominator, no, that's bad. 0 in the Wow, did I say that correctly? Zero in the denominator, no, that's bad. Zero in the numerator, that's okay. You just get zero, whatever. This is gonna be the equation. Uh, this is gonna be the slope of a horizontal line. All right. Find a linear equation whose graph is the straight line with the given properties. So we're going through the point two comma one, we have a slope of two. There's a couple of different ways we can do this, and I'm just showing you one method. If you know the point slope form for the equation of a line, then I encourage you to use it. Go ahead, especially if you're going to be going into calculus. That's the best approach. But I'm going with a, uh, let's not say the C word here. We'll just focus on the algebra. I'm going to use y equals mx plus b, or a slope intercept form, in order to keep it down uh, to only one equation that we need to un know and understand. So we're given a slope value of 2. We're also given an x value and a y value in our point. Using these ideas together with our equation y equals mx plus b, I know y is 1, equal sign, I know m is 2, I know x is 2, I have no idea what b is, but it's the only thing left, so I can find it. So if 1 equals 2 times 2 plus 4, I do 2 times 2, no it isn't, 1 equals 2 times 2 plus b, B, I do 2 times 2 to get 4. If 1 equals 4 plus B, I could subtract 4 from both sides and get B equals negative 3. I know my slope is 2. I know my B value is negative 3. And I could write the equation of my line. That's it. Don't make it overcomplicated. Let it be easy. If I'm going through the point 0, negative 1 third with a slope of 1 fourth, once again, we have our slope as 1 fourth. But look at this point. This point has an x value of 0. This is 
a y intercept. And if I already have the y intercept, I could fill in the m and the b, and I have my equation y equals 1 fourth x plus b, or in this case, minus 1 third. But what happens if we're not given the slope? What happens if we have two points? You always have to have a slope to get started. So we go back to some of our previous examples and we first find our slope. 1 minus a negative 4 over 1 minus 2. Always y's over x's. 1 minus a negative 4, that's 5. 1 minus 2, that's negative 1. And 5 over negative 1 is negative 5. So I have my slope now. We can choose either point to use. In our y equals mx plus b formula, I'll always choose the point that has smaller values and or no negatives. So I'm going to use 1, 1, but it works out just fine if you choose the other one instead, if you want to challenge yourself. So y is 1 equals m is negative 5. We just found that. x is 1 plus b. I can find what b is. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. I'll have 1 equals negative 5 plus b. So let's add 5 to both sides. 1 plus 5 is 6. 6 equals b. I have m. I have b. I could write my equation. y equals negative 5x plus 6. Last one. If I'm going through the point 1, negative 4 and a point 2, comma 5, first step, I need to know my slope. So 5 minus a negative 4 in the numerator, subtract the y values. In the denominator, 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. 5 plus 4 is 9. 9 over 1 is 9. Now I could choose either point, and I'm going to choose, even though these values are somewhat smaller, I'm going to use the ones that are not negative. So my y value is 5 equals m, my slope is 9, my x value is 2, plus b. 9 times 2 is 18, so I have 5 equals 18 plus b. To get b by itself, I'm going to subtract 18 from both sides. 5 minus 18 is a negative 13. And we have what we need. y equals m, so 9x minus 13. That's our equation. That's the skills. Coming up next is the models. Now we're going to use this along with some word problems to uh, get our solutions on. Thanks for listening.